Good morning, good afternoon, good evening all, it's Bear here. And I'd like to welcome you to my YouTube channel, A Box With No Lid. A channel that I'm creating not only to just bring awareness to the day-to-day -day lived realities of trauma, but also I want to get into the understandings needed to heal. And also to create the understanding out there in the world to give us the grace to be able to heal. Now this is the next video in the adoption series. And the next two are going to be a little button pushy. This video and the one that follows this one. But it's necessary to, to create an understanding, you know, not only just for adoptees, but for those who might come across this video who, who are is in, in a relationship with an adoptee, a partner of adoptee, or a therapist that are working with adoptees. Yeah, I will always come back to the basis of the fog because the fog is the structure the container that holds so much with how adoption affects people and children. And in this video, I want to look at what most people in the world look at. You know, if you're sitting in a shopping center and you see a loving couple walking hand in hand, totally connected to each other, holding the hand of a young child. Oh, wow, that's awesome. That's beautiful. Blah, 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 blah. To many adoptees, those of us who have had the fog collapse or those of us who, you know, are aware of what adoption has done, that's, you know, we, that's what we want and have always wanted and we know that we can never have it. It's a trigger, a massive trigger. The triggers for adoptees are pretty much everything that society says is good is a trigger. Family meals, family shopping centers, you know, everywhere you see families together and relationships functioning in that way, in movies, in real world, in TV shows, posters and books and stories. All of that reminds us of why are we not good enough to have that with our own mom and dad. Why were we relinquished? Why were we given up? Why were we taken? Why am I different? And all these things that go on in not just words, but in felt sense feelings. And when you go through that, you kind of become distant. Uh, and in up and coming videos down the track, I want to start to get into understanding attachment aspects around the, around the fog and for adoptees. And that's really complicated because there is so much to it. And there's so much that is not individually possible to do. It's, it's got to take, you know, others around to be able to, to, to work with this stuff. Hence, all these videos around understanding all the different aftermaths that removal and placement does. And it's not just adoption, it's also within foster care. And I've also seen these things with medical intervention, you know, when a baby is premature or something's happened and they've, they've spent months in a humidity crib where there was no touch or connection. There is so much to this that when we're under the triggering threats of what society sees as good, we become wrong. And it feeds the repression of who, <coughs> excuse me, who we were born to be. And we feed the avatar that we created to survive and to be part of that adopted family, that non-biological family. That being a cognitive process separates from the physicality of connection. And that's why a lot of adoptees are distant in our relationships. And a lot of our adoptees, you know, the physicality of relationships either are far more physical in the beginning and can become quite destructive 
or we become distant. And it's not because we reject those we are around, it's because we don't know what to do. And a lot of that is because of how do we make sense of not being good enough to be part of mom and dad, to be part of our biological family. And there are so many out there in the world go, well, you have a mom and dad. They bought you, they found you, they adopted you, they took you in, whatever. That's your forever family. <sighs> Sorry. That's one of the things that drives me to, you know, not a good place, that forever family crap. And all the rhetoric that comes around the complexities of what taking a child and giving it to somebody else involves. Getting back on track. When you look at how the world of what we aspire to have is that threat because of what was done and we cannot change what was done, that triad that constantly plays out is what keeps us distant. And it's not a choice. It's not something that you can repress. You can put it aside for a little while. And after a little while of putting it aside, it takes, you know, self-medication to keep it aside, to keep it at bay. So how do we work with it? Here's the $100 million question. And why you know, in future videos I want to go delve into some of this stuff because it, it, it's gonna take a lot of a lot of talking, a lot of information and a lot of ideas. Because as I said, it involves an entire ecology giving us the grace and being present to teach our body to move through that trauma of removal and placement and so forth and so forth. To allow the fog to collapse, to be reintegrated and to become a memory so that we can learn and our body can teach through physical experiences, positive physical experiences, to connect, participate, to, to, to have that to and fro, to belong. But understanding the triggers and respecting them for the adoptees around you, the ones you are in a relationship with, you are supporting, or you are an adopted parent, or needs to happen first. We need to be given the grace and the understanding that we are not choosing to separate ourselves. We just literally do not know what to do. Or we become so triggered and under threat. Or like what I do a lot is I just walk because I know I'll screw it up. You know, I've been single for a very long time because I know I cannot be present in a relationship the way they need me to and I don't want to hurt anybody else. So it's far better for me not to. And I know a hell of a lot of other adoptees around my age that are exactly the same. It's not that we don't want to. It's that we know that we will not be given the grace to learn. Therefore, we don't want to hurt anybody else. So we're just better, better off to be alone. That's the reality for a lot of adoptees. And that's because of the triggers. Now I choose to work with these triggers in movies and so forth to bring up the emotions, to try to explore ways to, to how I can change an ecology, to better support not just my attempts at healing, but also what I can put here for you guys and how I can construct ways and therapy bases that can actually work with adoption to heal it, not manage it. I mean, everything's about management and that drives me to despair because management works short term, it doesn't work long term. You cannot take a pill to connect, you cannot take a pill to heal trauma. You can mitigate some of your responses short term. You cannot do it long term because your body will get accustomed and it just it just in this never ending cycle of increasing. And I've digressed a little bit. But in understanding the complexities of triggers 
of body responses, of constantly seeing that this is what I've always wanted to be part of and why am I so broken that I can't, is the eternal battle created in so many adoptees through removal. And when the fog collapses or as the fog collapses, that's the battle that is going on internally. It always comes down to why wasn't I good enough? Why didn't my mom want me? Why did my mom never come and pick me up out of that box and welcome me into the family? And when you understand the purity of it, when you understand how a child felt it, that doesn't change when you're an adult. Those emotional triggers that get triggered and get set off by all these things are the purity and innocence perspectives of a child or a young infant, a very young infant. And the intensity of them is why within the adoptee world, self-medication is, is, is huge why we are overrepresented in all the demographics that are not exactly positive. So please keep this in mind and please understand that, like it says in the title, what everybody in this world thinks is, is brilliant, is, is what everybody wants. For us, for many of us, it's a huge trigger. And please gift us the grace to be able to learn through our experiences with you how to heal it. Because it's something that words will never heal. We need to have positive physical interaction and experiences, lots of them, to not feel judged, to not feel patronized, for our body to be able to learn, to grow, and to heal. I love you guys' feedback and comments. Please be kind, please be respectful, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.